everybody welcome back to this old trike uh we've had a bunch of things happening in the uh the past week or so since you last saw us uh, we made some room uh in the shop by letting go of a 250r you're gonna see who that went to just in a second we've got some parts in for the 350x and we went to a very good buddy's wedding and dragged home some cool stuff so without further ado uh let's show you what we've been up to So another one leaves the stable. Old Richie P is going to bring this beauty home. Preston his, man. His first ever 250R. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. It's nice when you can hook a buddy up with a machine that they want. And it's going to a great home. So let's get it loaded. We're losing the snow, which is good. What you got, just a couple inches around it was about two inches the other day. And I still got a, a car to put away, so I'm, I need my driveway so I don't have to spin tires. You need a ramp? You need a hand? No, have, have I got to hand this off to my videographer? <laughs> All right, this is how you load it. This is professional. Yeah, yep. Ready? Oh, this will be great content. There it is. So the next time we see this, forks will be bent. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> not far from the truth. Guy yesterday had a Chevy too. I don't know what's wrong with you people. I know. Oh, jeez, Dodge. Oof, it's broke down there. I gotta get a I tow truck. I can't. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> you put it in gear? Yeah, throw the gear. Might as well not be rocking back and forth. Yeah, no strap needed. No strap needed. That's not going anywhere. There it is. All right. We're going to wrap it up. Take care, gentlemen. They're driving away with the three-wheeler? They're backing all the way down the driveway? How many, how many three-wheelers do we have now? Are we going to be okay? How many? Can you, can you count? The, do you know the number? I think we're down to 103 now. What is this? <laughs> well, we'll see what we can do. <sighs> and that's all she wrote. A little more space in the shop. <laughs> say bye, Palin. Bye. I said say bye, Palin. Oh, say bye, Palin. No. <laughs> So I'm out here in my shop this morning and I've got a little time before work and I had been thinking about the two 350Xs and uh, thinking about some sometimes you squirrel things away and you might have spare parts and I think I might have something that would be perfect for the nicer of the two machines. Let me show you what I got. So as you recall, uh, Don Johnson, trike detective, did a forensic examination of this guy, got it going, and I was tinkering on this one, put some OEM rear tires and rims on the back, got rid of those horrendous metal jobs there. I think, I think these were like, you know, they got eight bolts, they're probably a universal rim, horrible. Anyway, I digress. But I remembered I had a really decent OEM front fender. And then it got me thinking. I do have those fenders, but those are my cream puffs that I'm going to put on a different machine. They came off my rider. But I was thinking that I got those guys. So I'm going to climb up there and pull those down. Those are good rider quality OEM fenders. We'll see how those look on this. I'm going to order a seat cover to recover the seat. This seat is 
86 C, obviously. We know that from the ATC. That was 86. The C is the cover has gotten hard and tightened up. It's only going to crack more the more you ride it. And there's really not much deforming going on there. I think once that seat cover gets taken off and the new one gets stretched over top of it, it would look pretty darn good. So we're going to do that. And we're going to take these fenders, which are nicer than those fenders. Those are the old school Meyer. They're very sun faded. The one on the front was extremely sun faded. And I don't understand this. And sometimes you don't understand things. But my daughter really wanted that front fender. Uh, like, really wanted it. So... I like to, you know, be a cool dad and like any cool dad gets their kids things they want. So I gave her the front fender. So it's in the house now. I don't know what the plan is with that. But this fender is less, uh, less faded, at least more consistently faded. The other one, half the sticker was gone. So you had half this oval there. So we're going to leave that as is. Put these on the machine behind me. Give this one some OEM fenders, a little detail job, new fork boots, and that's going to look like a really nice machine. This one will look respectable, and we both know they run. We all know that they both run very nice. I might, um, I've got the, I've got a spare set of rims over there that came with all this. I don't need the front for this in particular, but I do need some better rubber put on this. Maybe I'll get a set of fork boots for this. Just thinking. So much to do, but let's see what these look like. Let me climb up there. I'll save you the, the enjoyment of watching me get up there. And I'll drag those down and see what they look like. Okay, I made it. In that box is a... Uh, New old stock seat for my 400EX that eventually I would enjoy putting putting on that machine when I'm done riding it as a regular. But these are the two fenders. These, these came with a machine I got a long time ago, this set in particular. And they're all cracked up and stitched with bailing wire. I don't know if you can see it, but they're they're sun checked. They've lost their glimmer. They're they're good from a distance if you got nothing better. But these are pretty decent. So these can be cleaned up, buffed up. The only main flaw is a little crack right there that I can kind of address from the back. But I think those will buff up nice. That combined with this front fender that I had in the other room. And the holes for the, the bracket. I think this machine is going to look very respectable. With a fresh seat cover. Those fenders on it. Probably next time you see this, it'll be looking like that. So, that's exciting. So a day has passed, and all I've done is wipe things down a little bit. I took off the front fender, getting ready for that one to go on, and I pulled some tires out of inventory. It's funny how you, you obtain, and I don't even remember where I got some of these tires. I think these came off a set of rims I bought from... My buddy Vinny, who doesn't even watch my videos, he's getting married tomorrow, so I'm excited for him, but I'd be more excited if he'd watch these videos. But I think those came from him. I'm going to put those on these rims. I got that front max that I think came from a big bunch of things I bought last fall. But those will go on these aluminum rims, which will go on this guy. So... 
Those can go in the garbage for those strikers on steel wheels. That, that thing doesn't even hold air, but look, it looks like it is. It's so stiff. It looks like it holds air. It's like a run flat. That rim will come off and go up on the shelf for another project. This is the front tire, uh, front fender off the machine on my right, which I think is the match to these. So I don't, these machines all came with no fenders on them. So I just threw fenders on as, as I saw fit. I got to figure out if I'm going to put, make an attempt to put headlights in here. I looked at lenses on eBay and they're, Atrocious if you can find them. I don't think I have any spares. I think I did at one point, but I sold them That's why you don't sell anything <laughs> But this actually this motor cleaned up very nice This is what had that bluish kind of um, Haze on it and all I did was use a, a little magic eraser With some Simple green. You see my simple green hiding over there? Hi. There it is. And uh, and then I sprayed some WD-40 on a rag and just kind of wiped it all around to kind of even things out. So it wasn't blotchy. But that motor looks really good. I'm not going to get too far into these. These will be somebody else's baby, we'll say. They'll, they'll be the ones to either just ride it or take it back to being pretty. That's going to be up to them. I'm just getting them respectable running and going to send them down the road. My fork boots for this machine are going to come in today, I believe. So maybe over the weekend when I get back from my buddy's wedding, this one might be able to be close to being done. The decals I ordered for the tank came in. So this thing's really close. This thing, I gotta drop these tires off to uh, to my shop. Not my shop, but the shop I do all my tire work at. I have a bead breaker. I have tire spoons. Uh, I just it is a thankless job swapping these tires out, and you can lose an hour on one tire, and depending on how you value your time. An hour can be a lot, so I uh, I'm past the days where you know I will I will gladly spend twenty to forty dollars to have these tires swapped over and not lose an hour of my time um, and frustration and busted knuckles and all those things. So that's just a little shop update. What happened in the last twenty four hours? Not much, just some thinking and. Uh, plotting some moves so we'll uh we'll keep you updated and that's it for now stay tuned so today we find ourselves with miss palin here cleaning up the junkier fenders at the moment so when we put them back on the shelf they look respectable i think before we put them on i'll throw some some wire staples in the back i don't know that i'm gonna deal with that right now but she's going to get those cleaned up and then she's going to move on to these our tank decals are in our fork boots are in so my plan for this moment is to get the fork boots swapped around put the tank on with the shrouds get the decals on and uh after these fenders are cleaned up i'll mount those my seat cover hasn't come in not sure what the plan is there, but check in with us in a little bit and you'll see what we've done. So we've slid the forks out and what I'm going to do right now, and this is a little tip that you probably already know, definitely not the first one to figure this out. This fork had some 
junk on it. Not really corrosion. Just some residue. There's some on the inside here. But even if these get a little light corrosion, one tip to do is see some WD-40 and some steel wool and just, it'll polish them back up, lube them, make them a little slippery so they'll slide in a lot easier than they slid out. But that's the trick. I think I'm going to, those are so hard, I'm going to cut those off the rest of the way and stay tuned. So I've discovered something. And I figured out a workaround. I'm not necessarily proud of this. And if this was a keeper, I would do this the right way. But this might be a tip that somebody wouldn't mind using, especially on a rider. So here, let me show you what I've done. So you might have noticed on eBay and Amazon, they advertise these as... Uh, 250R and 350X fork boots. And if you've ever dealt with either of those fork boots, you know they're different sizes. The 250R had a larger fork and a larger fork lower. So before I fully removed the entire fork boot from my fork, the original one, I was curious to see how it was going to fit. And I had a spare spare fork over there in the corner you can see a couple 350x forks and i found out that this was too loose this would not grip part of me was thinking this feels uh more flexible than the oem fork boots which are on my my machine right there those are oem they feel a little stiffer not too stiff but these just feel more rubberier but they look better than the cheap ones you can get Although these are pretty cheap. These were like 20 bucks. I thought maybe these would be stretchy enough to fit over a 250R fork boot, but fit a 350X well, but it doesn't. So here's what I've done. These are pretty hard. You can see they're dried out. They're very bleached out from the sun. What I figured out was if you cut that the right way, the right amount, this fork boot can fit right down around it and grip it. So instead of gripping the groove that's in the, the fork lower, it's gripping the old fork boot. It's not, it's not Mike Palmgren work by any stretch of the imagination. I'm embarrassed to even uh, be doing that, but I don't have time to order another set of fork boots. I've promised somebody that they'd, be able to see this machine in the near future. So I'll point that out to them. They'll probably be fine with it. And uh, I'm going to do that to the other side and get this front end put back together. So here we go. How are you doing, Palin? Okay. Great. Those fenders are looking beautiful. All right. Here we go. My fender washer extraordinaire is cleaning up the front fender. We are ready to mount that. Front forks are back installed. Those boots look 
in my opinion, a lot better than, you know, something like this, you know, where you've got to have a, a zip tie down at the bottom and something up top. We were able to preserve the, uh, the clamps at the top. Those are gripping on, I've got these stretched nice and they're holding, so I like that. I moved on to the tank shrouds. That one is nice, that's the uh, right side. The left side has a crack, but is otherwise really nice. So what we're gonna try to do, even though this is a thinner plastic than, than the fenders, we're gonna try to put one of these wire staples or a few of these in from the back and secure this so it it's stable um it's not going to be invisible but i'd rather have it be a little stable if i can so we'll see what we can do with that so this is the kit i picked up i forget where if it was amazon or ebay or something but pretty simple just trigger operated you plug it in it heats up once you pull the trigger so it doesn't stay hot down here it came with a variety of heat staples. Some you would use in an angle. That's a very mild crimp there. This is a, a larger crimp. We might try a couple of those. This would be used in a this next one I'm about to show you. A big plane flying by. So that would be used in a outside corner. And then you've got one of these for an inside corner. But we're going to pull a couple of these bigger crimp ones since we're spanning a, a big crack. I've used these successfully in the past. My buddy at MRC Builds has done a, a wonderful video on these. I'm not gonna try to plastic weld these in advance, but it's just very thin. So it would be very easy to blow through and there's not a lot of material to embed. So, I'm gonna be very careful about how much I embed these in, in there. I'm even gonna put my fingers on the back just so I can feel the heat. Not sure I recommend this, but here we go. That's not very far. It does have grip. I'm letting it cool down. Okay. And from the other side, you can see a dark spot right there. I don't know if it's coming through. That is held fairly decent. I'm going to try to put one here and then down here. This is just to stabilize it. I'm not concerned with cosmetics. I just don't want it to have all that flex and then crack all the way through and then you've got nothing. So we're just working with what we got. Just a slight embed. And you end up clipping those flush. I'll let this cool just a little bit. Pulls out. If I can get one right next to that mounting point, maybe one on each side because that's going to be held fast there. So that extra support there will be beneficial. Okay, we'll clip those flush. 
Again, it doesn't make it disappear, but it's stable. You can put a decal on that if you want. You might have saw me taking the uni filter off, the uni filter decal off. But we'll get that mounted. Okay, we've made some progress. Fork boots are on, front fender is on. My master fender cleaner has cleaned up the rear fenders. We're getting ready to put the tank decals on. I don't have that seat cover, so I can't correct that just yet, but we are getting very close. As soon as that comes in and my air filter, this will be ready to rock. Uh, both headlights were blown and I was concerned that it was a voltage regulator issue, which when the voltage regulators on these go bad, it blows all your lights. So I was thinking maybe that was the problem, but I had one spare light that I threw in and when I fired it up, it turned on, it did not pop. So I'll get another headlight ordered so this can have dual headlights like it should. And then I've got a buddy who I've given first dibs on it, but if he passes or he wants something a little less, a little easier on the pocketbook, he can have that one, but we'll see. But both of these are going to be going. So that's all we have to say about that. Let's get these tank decals on. Here we go. Let's put some decals on. I'm going to transform this whole thing. We got the shop cat out here. My old cat didn't like the shop, but that's our cat Tango. He appears to like what he sees out here. So I'm going to get my camera set up to record me throw these on. You know what? I'm going to take a measurement off a known tank, a known good tank, so I know what I'm doing. So this is mildly arbitrary, but the tip of that H, the lower front portion of that H is about one third between the two bolts. The wing slightly wraps. We're gonna eyeball it. We're gonna go, we're gonna go crazy. That's an aftermarket one. Maybe it's not an aftermarket one, but it's not original, I know that. I feel good. I feel good about this. Let's do this. Okay, I 
We've done the tank decals. Let me show you what my girl over here is doing. Honey, I think you're going to have to push harder. Yeah. <laughs> but these, uh, these motors were all kind of oxidized. So the Magic Eraser has enough enough grit, so to speak, to uh, clean up that oxidation. Go right over that exhaust guard, too. Yes? Yep. I did. Okay. Already. Oh, every, you did everywhere? and it. I, I haven't done it down here yet. Yeah, so okay. Tank decals look nice. They really make the machine. And look at that. You push back, honey? Got a really nice looking 85 350X here with a new seat cover on that. I tell you what, didn't we do good? Should we call it quits here, Palin? No. Well, we're going to call it quits for today. Flip this around and say goodbye to you. Thanks for watching. We really appreciate it. I am a very blessed man. I had two good helpers. My son put the front fender on. My daughter has been out here diligently cleaning. And we're just very thankful. And we love Honda three-wheelers. So it's always a pleasure bringing them back to looking like nice running machines. And we'll send them on to a new home. Thanks for watching. Bye.